Bah, je vais commencer avec euh, un petit mot en français euh, pour dire que euh, je vous remercie pour l'opportunité de parler et me présenter en anglais. Euh, je suis en train d'apprendre les langues de Molière, mais euh, je suis toujours plus à l'aise en anglais. So I'm going to start uh, with uh, a little introduction of myself, and I'm going to tell you about a new project in Nantes, and then I'm going to give you a little talk about uh, the title that you see on the program, about how the system is crushing our spirits. Uh, but first, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and the program that we're starting in Nantes. Uh, so my name is, is Rob Spiro. Uh, I've recently moved to Nantes from Silicon Valley, San Francisco. I was living in San Francisco for uh, about 10 years. I started as a, a web developer, and then I became a, a designer. And then about 10 years ago, I launched a company uh, called Aardvark that was a, a search technology using artificial intelligence to answer questions from your social network. And I was working on the product and the design and the marketing. And we built this company for a few years, and in the beginning of 2010, we were acquired by Google for $50 million, uh, and I became an employee of Google. And so I worked at Google for a little while as a product manager. I was the product manager on the team that launched Google Hangouts, the video chat project, and then Google Plus. But actually, what I, what I love is startups. I love launching a new idea. Uh, and so I left Google to do a second startup. The startup was called Good Eggs that we launched in 2011. I'm going to tell you about it in my presentation. Uh, but we built Good Eggs for a few years. Uh, we became hundreds of employees and tens of millions of dollars in revenue. Uh, we raised quite a lot of money from investors. We raised about $60 million from investors. And as we were growing, uh, I realized again, after four or five years, that what I really love to do is start companies and I wasn't as comfortable being the CEO of a, a many hundred person company. So I was able to recruit and find a, a CEO for Good Eggs. And then during this time in San Francisco, I was also very lucky uh, to find and marry uh, a Nantes, a girl from Nantes. Uh, and we decided also when we had a little French American children that it was time to, to move to Nantes. And so we moved to Nantes about a year ago and I started talking to people here in Nantes and asking, how can I help the startup community? What can I do to get involved? And what I found in Nantes is this incredible energy in the startup community. You have a few companies that have already become really big and raised tens of millions of euros in financing. You've got iAdvise and Lingo and Akanea with hundreds of employees. And then you also have all these great new startups that are launching almost every week, every day. So much energy, so much creativity and a, lot, a great sense of community in Nantes, too. And what people told me was, what we're really missing here in Nantes is a world-class startup accelerator to help startups launch, to give them seed financing, to get them through the, the first steps, and to attract uh, investment capital to Nantes. And so we started brainstorming, uh, how can we use the energy of Nantes to create the best startup accelerator? And I'm very excited to announce that we're launching now at Web Today the Imagination Machine, which is going to be a new world-class startup accelerator here in Nantes. We're starting to accept applications right now. You can go on the, on the site, the internet site, uh, imagination-machine.com, and apply with your startup. And what's interesting about the Imagination Machine is actually it's 25 entrepreneurs in Nantes, including the founders of I advise and Lingo and Akaneo, who are actually investing their personal money in this accelerator. And so if you're selected as one of the startups that we choose this summer, not only will you get a, a small investment and a three-month acceleration program where we can teach you how a startup really launches in Silicon Valley, but also you get L'Esprit Nantes with the community of Nantes entirely supporting you. Uh, and we're very excited. We're accepting applications from startups. We're also accepting applications from individuals. If you are uh, an engineer or a designer or a business generalist and you want to get involved in a startup but you don't have your own project, you can apply on our site. 
We're going to select the best people. We're going to give you a salary for these three months. And you can come and you can start a new company within the accelerator or join one of the companies that we choose. Et je, vais, je vais essayer de dire ça en français aussi parce que c'est important. Euh, à partir d'aujourd'hui, vous pouvez, euh, sur le site internet, c'est imagination-machine.com, euh, postuler, il y a un formulaire de candidature, euh, vous pouvez postuler, et on va choisir les meilleurs cinq startups cet été. Et je vais continuer en, en anglais, mais euh, vous pouvez euh, m'approcher en français. Merci pour échanger. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Okay, so that's the imagination machine. I'm very excited that we're launching it here in Nantes. But actually, I want to spend uh, the next 20 minutes or so telling you a little story and some lessons that I learned in my last startup, Good Eggs. Uh, so we can do the... Okay. Here's the talk, that the system is crushing our spirits and how a startup can fight back. So let me just introduce Good Eggs to start. Good Eggs was a startup that we created with a mission. We had a mission statement on our first day. Our mission is to grow and sustain local food systems worldwide. And what we saw in the world is that, especially in America, but in France too and all over Europe, you have these big industrial food systems that are making food that's not really great for you, that are replacing the small farmers and artisans in your communities. And actually, the food that we're getting through the main supermarkets is not great for us, and it's not great for the environment, and it's not great for our communities. And we said, you know what? We can do something better. We can fix this system. And so we started this company with a mission. And over many years, we grew to the point today where even though it operates just in San Francisco today, we're still doing uh, millions of dollars of revenue of chiffre d'affaires every month. We have hundreds of employees. There are 500 small local farms and food producers who are selling through Good Eggs, and we're going to expand to other cities in the United States soon. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of the, the things that we learned building this business. And so I'm going to back up, and I'm going to talk about how the system is crushing our spirits. And so first let me tell you, what do I mean when I say the system? I actually think that Society is made up of many systems. I remember uh, in school, in biology class, learning about the systems of the human body. Maybe you remember this too. You have the, the skeletal system and the digestive system and the, uh, the, uh, the respiratory system. And all of these very complex and very intricate systems are, are layered on top of each other in the same human body and it makes up the human body. And I think that society is, is the same, actually. It's made up of a layer of all of these very complicated systems. And when you put them together, you get the world that we live in today. When you walk outside the world uh, in our cities and, and communities. And it's not an infinite number of these systems that make up society. I think it's probably between 10 and 20 major systems that make up our society. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the food system. We're talking about uh, the farms, the food companies, the producers, that are the bakeries, the, uh, uh, the butchers. We're talking about the distribution companies and the big warehouses in every city that store food, the trucks that transport food, the companies that make the packaging for food, and then, of course, the supermarkets and the markets where we buy our food, all of the media around food, what we consume and how to cook. In a city like Nantes, the food system has thousands of, of companies, tens of thousands of employees in this very complex system. And it's the same kind of system that you see with equal complexity uh, that powers finance, that powers our, our politics and our, our government and our healthcare and, and on and on. Okay, so I said the system is crushing our spirit. What do I mean when I say the spirit? This one is harder to define. But in society, we're constantly being put into these buckets. We're either a consumer, or we're an employee, or we're a user. 
And actually, there's part of us that will not be reduced. There's part of us that is bigger than any of that, that, that is our whole. There's part of us that demands dignity. There's part of us that is able to care for others. There's part of us that is able to transcend and is, feels elevated. It's the part of us that is touched by beauty and wants to connect with nature and is touched by family and love. And if you're a religious person, it's the part of us that, that believes in God. And this is our spirit. And it's very hard to talk about. We never talk about it in industry or in the tech industry. It's a, it's a poetic concept. But I think it's very real, and I think that each of you in the audience uh, can see for yourselves that it's true that there is this, this part of us that is a spirit, however you define it. And what I'm trying to start with here is that the system is crushing our spirit. We have these systems in society, and it's crushing our spirit. How? Well, we're very lucky in the tech industry to have jobs that give us dignity, where we can exercise creativity, where we can feel freedom. And there are not many jobs like that in society. They're harder and harder to find, actually. And if you look at the jobs that typically really elevate our spirit, the teachers and the caretakers in our communities, these jobs are, are less and less well-paid. They're less and less secure. They're overworked. Jobs with dignity are harder and harder to find. It's a, it's a negative trend that we see in society. When you walk down the street, you're constantly marketed to. You're seeing ads on every site, on every television screen, on billboards, and this, this reduces us to consumer. To me, this feels like it's crushing our spirit. Screens. There's too many screens in our lives. We're looking at our screen on our phone and our screen on our TV and our screen on our computer, and you know what? The part of us that is bigger than all of that and that wants to be elevated is a little bit reduced by constantly looking at a two-dimensional screen. When we buy things, food or any kind of product, we're less connected to how this thing was made, to where it actually comes from, to the source of what we make. And this feeling of disconnection, I think, is really contrary to the spirit. We have a system of society today that really devalues nature and rural communities. Everything is all about the hyper-connected urban center. But actually, those, those rural communities and that natural world is really important to us. And actually, this list, how is the system crushing our spirit? It's really easy to make this list. And there's hundreds of things that I'm sure everybody here can add to the list. It's not hard to think about how the systems that make up our society actually are not great. They're not conducive to the life of the spirit that we could all dream about. I put this on the list too, the race for productivity, that in our industry, we're more and more connected to email constantly. We're measured in everything we do to be more productive. And it's hard to have a, a broader life that is unmeasurable, that is expansive in this kind of system. Okay, so I've defined how the system is crushing our spirit. And there are lots of ways. It's a, big, it's a big area of discussion. And I want to talk about how when we started Good Eggs, the goal was to fight back. The goal was to say, okay, there's this part of the system, the food production system, and we can do a better job. We can do a better job by connecting people to their farms and to their producers and really uh, helping you understand the sources, the production of what you eat and make you feel connected to this cycle because we thought that's going to nourish the spirit. We're going to give you better food that's better for you. We're going to take this old system that is more and more industrial and more and more disconnected, and we're going to use technology to make it better for, for people and for the human spirit and for the small farms and for the communities that enrich us all. And this is also a big important piece of what we wanted to do. In the food system, especially in America, a big part of the labor force is really poorly treated. In America, 25% of the workers in the food industry are uh, what they call illegal immigrants, undocumented immigrants, who don't really have rights. The workforce practices in the food industry are some of the worst. The pay is bad. The benefits are bad. The job security is bad. And we wanted to reinvent it. We wanted to say, we're going to build a better system that takes care of people, that offers jobs with dignity. And here was our theory about how we were going to build this company. We said, okay, there's this huge bucket of profitable market opportunities. These are things that we can do in technology. This is the, the typical startup. And if we're a profitable, high-growth startup, 
We can raise lots of capital from investors to expand our concept. We can, we can reach real scale. We can attract the best talent to come build this innovative solution. And there's this other bucket of making a better world, things that are going to improve society, uh, especially for the benefit of the human spirit. And good eggs is going to exist right at the intersection. There's this overlap, a rare opportunity to build a company in the overlap. And this was the theory of good eggs, how a startup can fight back against the system. And I want to tell you three very quick anecdotes about how actually it was much more complicated than this. This was really hard. Okay, number one, well, this is, I wanted to show you that the idea of Good Eggs at the beginning was to build a company with heart and at the intersection of these things, the profitable market opportunity and building a better world. Okay, first anecdote, bananas. Bananas are the number one grocery item in America. Americans buy a lot of bananas because they're easy to eat, they're easy to feed your kids, you eat them for a snack, you eat them for breakfast. Bananas do not grow in the United States. And our idea was to build a company entirely based on local food systems. You're going to connect to your farmer, it's going to come from nearby. And so at the beginning, we did not sell bananas. And we started to get customers, and we started to grow as a company. And the customers kept telling us, we really wish you carried bananas, because we're going to buy bananas anyway. But if we have to go to the supermarket to buy bananas, it's actually more convenient to get everything at the supermarket, since we're already there. And we're not actually going to shop on good eggs, or we're only going to buy a very few things. And we said, no. We're not going to carry bananas. We're all about our mission. We're only existing at the intersection. And as we were growing, we, we started to slow down in our growth. And we were pretty clear why. It's because our assortment was not big enough, and people couldn't do their full grocery shopping on Good Eggs. And so it became something that they only used on special occasions. And actually, in order to succeed as a company, we needed to be the weekly grocery shop for customers. And so we did a little experiment. We said, OK after fighting it for months and months. Let's carry a few bananas. We're going to find a producer that we like in South America that has ethical practices, as far as we can tell, and start selling it for one week and see what happens. And it immediately worked. People loved it. They want their bananas. And this was hard for me, personally. I want to succeed as a business, but for me, the reason we started Good Eggs was our mission and fighting back against the system. And I felt like, ugh, I'm becoming more like the system. Second quick anecdote is that we had this idea when we started that the employees in our warehouse were going to rotate tasks to make their jobs more fun. We wanted jobs that felt fun. And so one day you would do receiving from producers. Another day you would do delivery routes. The third day you would be preparing fruits and vegetables. And everybody took a turn as a manager. And as we started to grow, we started to hire a lot of people for our warehouses. And, and it, was, it was great. People enjoyed the work. And we became 20 people, and then 50 people, and then 100 people. And we realized that we were spending way too much money on our team. And actually, we weren't making money on the orders. And if you are losing money on every order, then growing to more orders is actually bad because you're going to accelerate your losses. And it became very scary because actually we were growing like this and our, our losses were growing like this. Uh, and the answer was pretty clear, which was, well, you'd be more efficient if you specialize, if everybody does one thing really well and you learn how to pack orders really fast or you're doing deliveries all the time and there's one manager who knows how to be a manager. And I resisted it for so long, because for me, that felt like the old system that we were trying to fight against. But at a certain point, we realized we needed to survive as a company. And we experimented with a system that was more specialized. And we became, overnight, 20% more efficient. 
And so we kept doing it. Third quick story, uh, our inventory. We had this idea when we started that when you buy on Good Eggs your groceries, you're going to buy it directly from the producer. And this is kind of a financial detail, but it was important to us. You're going to buy directly from the producer, and then the producer is going to bring us the food after you order. Because usually in a grocery store, the grocery store buys the food in a bulk quantity. They hold on to it, and then they resell it to the customer. And so you're disconnected from the producer. And we said, no, we're going to be different. The problem with this is that customers needed to order two days before their delivery because the farmer or the producer needed to get the order, prepare the food, and then bring it to us. And this was okay for our first 100 users, for our first 1,000 users. But as we started to grow and we needed to reach the mass market, le grand public, in order to really succeed in scale, we realized that we needed to be more convenient. You needed to get your order the same day if we were going to be competitive in the market. And in order to do that, we needed to have inventory. We needed to buy the food and resell it, just like other grocery stores. And our growth started to slow. And so again, we did an experiment. We said, OK, well, let's try. We're going to buy and hold inventory and resell it. And of course, it worked. People were very excited to have their groceries delivered the same day. You can open your phone, press a few buttons in the morning, and then in the afternoon, the best groceries you've ever tasted arrived at your door. Home delivery. And we started growing much faster. And so we had our theory at the beginning where we we're going to build our company. And the problem is that actually there wasn't the same overlap that we thought between making a better world and a profitable market opportunity. And we were kind of left in the middle. And so we did, of course, what we had to do. We moved over here. And the company was working, and it was really hurting me. And this was keeping me up at night. And sometimes you know, people ask an entrepreneur, what's your biggest problem? What's keeping you up at night? And my answer was kind of hard to talk about. My answer was, I don't think we're fighting back against the system enough. And so at this point in the talk, it's kind of like a pessimistic note. It sounds like a bummer. But this is an optimistic talk, because after, after thinking about this and, and struggling with this, at Good Eggs, we came up with a new strategy. We're thinking about it wrong. We have a new way to think about how a startup can fight against the system. And this is what I want to tell you. This is the optimistic message that I have for you. Here's the strategy. Here's what we figured out. You have a profitable market opportunity, and you, another, another universe of solutions to make a better world. And here's where you should build your startup. Here and here. And do both things at the same time. So what's the profitable market opportunity for Good Eggs? It's a grocery store in your pocket with a great app that delivers in the same day with a full assortment of things that you can get at the supermarket, with low-priced alternatives when the local artisanal product is too expensive. There's a market opportunity. It's what Good Eggs is doing today, and it's why we're growing quickly. It's why we're able to raise capital, and it's why it's profitable. And at the same time, at Good Eggs, our strategy is to make a better world. Not because it's also a profitable market opportunity, but it's because it's our values, and it's what we want to do, and it's why the company exists. And that's why we source 80% of all of our food from small local farms, which is much, much more than any other grocery store. That's why we're trying to teach our customers how to cook, because we think it's better for the world, and it's better for them. It's better for their spirits. That's why we have employment practices where every employee, from the hourly employee in the warehouse, gets stock in the company, becomes an owner of the company, has opportunities for advancement, has a job that dignifies them. That's why we're making investments in the infrastructure that supports small 
producers. And we're doing these things because we want to. And we're doing these things and they're making a difference. And Good Eggs today is much better for the world and much better for the spirit of our customers and our producers than the alternative, the old system. And so this is my advice for startups, which is if you want to be a startup and you want to succeed and scale and raise capital and change the world, you need to nail it on your profitable market opportunity. You need to find the market opportunity and do an amazing job of seizing the opportunity, finding your customers, building profitable margins. At the same time, within your company, not because it's good for business, but because it's good for people, you can have social, environmental, spiritual goals. You can have goals about how you're going to make the world a better place, about how you're going to help people, and they can be very ambitious goals. And as soon as you separate these things and you treat them separately, you're able to succeed on both. And what's cool about this to me is that if you're just looking for the overlap when you're building a social enterprise, there are very few kinds of companies that can fight against the system. But if you think about it like this, if you're building a startup doing business intelligence or software as a service or a music startup, there's no reason why any startup can't also at the same time pick some goals that change the world, that nourish the spirits not only of your customers but also of your employees, and use the power because a startup is a powerful system with talented people and lots of capital. You can use that to fight against the parts of the system of our society that are crushing our spirits. And so for me, this is a very optimistic message, even though it's, it's nuanced and it's complicated. And this is what I, I learned at Good Eggs that I wanted to share with you. Merci beaucoup.